All right, welcome to lesson three, experimental probability of simple events. We're gonna continue learning about probability and we're gonna talk about something called experimental probability. So that means we're gonna do an experiment. So go ahead and pause the video, add this to your table of contents, start a new page, you know what to do. So if you think about taking a paper cup and throwing it in the air, what are the things that could happen when it lands? So one thing that could happen is that it's gonna land on its top, upside down, or it could land on the bottom, the way that you know, you'd normally put the cup before you pour something in, or it could land on its side. So there's three possible outcomes. So it's natural to think, hey, um, there's a one-third chance of it landing on the top, one-third chance on the bottom, one-third chance on the side. But it's experimental probability. So let's do an experiment and see what actually happens. One, Here's my lovely assistant two, tossing the cup three, keep going. 20 times. Four. Sped up, by the way. Six. Seven. Grab it quick. Keep going. Eight. All right, keep going. Nine, ten, quick, 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 eleven, twelve, thirteen, keep going fast, fast, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. All right, so let's look at the results of what just happened there. It landed on its top four different times. It did not land on the bottom at all. It's actually kind of tricky to pull off, and it landed on its side 16 times, giving us a total of 20 trials. So are all the outcomes equally likely? Well, as you can see, no, they are not. If I wanted to find the probability of each event, I'm gonna put the number of times it happened, so I'm gonna say probability of top is four out of 20 times, which simplifies down to one fifth probability of it landing on its bottom in this case didn't happen at all. I mean, so that's zero. And the probability of it landing on its side happened 16 out of the 20 times, which simplifies down to uh, four fifths. Okay. So what would you think would happen if we performed more trials? Um, our numbers would probably be similar, just larger. Um, and eventually, we would definitely probably have it land on that bottom. And the last question is, what is the sum of all the probabilities? Well, if I add one-fifth plus zero plus four-fifths, well, I can make that into zero-fifths, because that doesn't really matter. And I get five out of five, and five divided by five is one. And that makes sense, because it's certain that something is going to happen. One means certain, and if I throw that cup up, unless, you know, I'm on the space station or something, it's going to land, and it's either going to land on its top, bottom, or side. So it makes sense that if we add all those things together, we're going to get one. Okay, so what we just did right then was calculate experimental probability. That just means that we're going to do an experiment, and an improbability experiment just means doing something, like flipping a cup or rolling a die or flipping a coin. And we compare the number of times that whatever it was that we wanted to happen, happened, and we put that over the total number of trials, like how many times we rolled the die or flipped the cup or whatever. So go ahead and pause the video, copy these things in. A big thing to remember is that they may not be equally likely, okay? Like the cup example was not equally likely. All right, so now you can watch me. Um, Martin has obviously did something wrong. He is now grounded. He has no Wi-Fi. He has no technology whatsoever. He has a bag of marbles, and he's in his room. So he's going to pull one marble at random from the bag, write down the color, and then put it back in the bag. And he's going to do that a bunch of times because he literally has nothing else he can do. He records the results on his table over here. So we're going to find the experimental probability of drawing each color. Well, let's start with the probability of red. Okay. Well, how many times did he pull a red? Twelve times. How many times did he reach into that bag of marbles and figure it out? 
or, and gave it a try. Well, let's see, we'd have to add everything to figure out how many pulls he did. So if I add all this up, boop, I get 50 trials. So that's 12 out of 50. Okay, well, I see that, hey, that's even numbers there. Um, so I can divide those by 2 and get 6 over 25 for the probability of red. Probability of pulling a blue. Let's see, he pulled a blue 10 out of 50 times. I can divide both those numbers by 10, giving me 1 fifth. Uh, probability of green is 15 out of 50. Again, I can divide both those by 5 and get 3 out of 10. Or sorry, I can divide those by 5, not again. And then last but not least, probability of yellow is 13 out of 20, or sorry, 13 out of 50 times. 13 is a prime number. There's nothing I can add to that, or I can divide that by evenly besides 13 and 1. So that's good. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Copy all this down. Yes, including this little chart up here, the whole thing. Okay, copy it all down. All right. Um, so this represents a spinner with four sections labeled A, B, C, and D. And if you really, really want to, you can draw yourself a little spinner here. Okay, A, B, C, and D. But it actually doesn't tell us that all the spaces are the same size. We don't really know. Um, so let's calculate the probability. So probability of A, just do that to it, is it happened 14 times. We'd spin A 14 times. How many times did we spin it all together? So again, we need to add all four of these numbers together. So let's see, we get 21, 22, 32, we get 40 times. Okay, so this is 14 over 40 here. All right, or I can recognize they're both even numbers, so I can divide them by two and get seven over 20. All right, let's do probability of finding B, or spinning a B. Um, that happened 7 out of the 40 times. And again, 7 is a prime number. I can't divide it by anything. So that's good right there. Probability of C is 11 out of 40 times. Again, 11 is prime. I can't divide it by anything. So it's already simplified. And probability of spinning a D would be 8 out of 40 times. And I, can, I know that if I count by 8s, I get to 40. So those are both multiples of 8. If I divide by 8, I get 1 fifth as my final probability. Okay, again, pause and go ahead and copy this example down, including the chart. So now let's think about this for a second. It says a coin is flipped. It lands on heads 13 times and tails 20 times. Well, let's do what, what we've been doing and figure out experimental probability. Um, probability of landing on heads is uh, 13 times it happened, so let's put 13 on top. And if I add 7 and 13, I get 20, so I know it's 13 out of 20 for our experimental probability. And tails landed 7 times out of 20. Okay, now let's compare that to theoretical probability. Theoretical probability is thinking about how many possible outcomes there are. There's two, because it could land on heads or tails and how many times or how many sides it has that are heads, how many sides it has that are tails. So there's one side that's head out of two sides total for heads, and then there's one side that's tails out of two sides total for that. So again, is this exactly what happened over here in our experiment? Um, we would probably predict, you know, half the time it would happen, and half of 20 is 10. So did it land exactly 10 heads and exactly 10 tails? No, but that's life for you, right? doesn't always go exactly how you think it would. Okay, that's paper time. Go ahead and pause the video. Write down these two answers on your scratch paper. Tuck it in your notebook, and I'll be waiting to see you tomorrow. Sleep tight.